Okay, so these are the notes uh, for classification. We go over these. I'm going to do these a little bit different, different way this time, and I use a different uh, resource to do it. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit better. Maybe the sound will be better, and I'll be able to show you some different pictures and such. Probably won't be able to draw as much with this until I get used to it, but uh, hopefully these will be better or more informative than the ones I've been giving you. Uh, so looking at classification, uh, this is a way that uh, scientists organize or categorize all living things. It starts with domain. There's just three of those. All the organisms fit into three big groups. Then it goes down to kingdom, where there's six groups. Still you know, really inclusive. And then you go down to phylum, where a kingdom then becomes split up into a phylum, then phylum into classes and order and family and genus and species like that. Just goes down. Let me show you a picture of this. Uh, if I go down here, here's the same thing again. Uh, but here's an example picture right here of uh, this process. So uh, here's kingdom animalia. We have different bears: grizzly bear, black bear, panda bear. Uh, and even red foxes are in here and squirrels and so you can see this is a very diverse group but they're all animals and then we go down to chordata and they they all fit into this except sea star now gets kind of kicked out of the group then you go down to mammals and then we lose the coral snake and then see it becomes less and less inclusive as you work your way to the bottom and then carnivores so we get rid of the squirrel because he doesn't eat squirrels he eats just nuts and stuff like that <clears throat> and then we just keep going down Ursidae. So this is like the bear group. And then the genus Ursus. And we see well, now we're left with the black bear and the grizzly bear. And we could add polar bears and other things left in here as well. And finally, where the one big separator is the species. So Ursus arctos is the genus. His genus is Ursos. And uh, Arctos is the species name for a grizzly bear. And this just shows that whole process of the, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and genus, and species, and how that all works together. So if we go back to our notes, that's really what all that is talking about. But if we just take a minute to go back and look at these, so we have eukaryota, little bold these, and these are all organisms that uh, are eukaryotic cells. So this would include plants, just type that in, plants, animals, fungi, protista, right? So that is all eukaryota. And uh, so we'd have that domain. Eventually, when we get down to kingdom here, you're going to see that this eukaryotic gets divided out into these groups, these four groups from one. But then we have archaea and eubacteria, and these are back, just bacteria. Let me put them a different color here. Make them like red. And then for those guys, these are just uh, two types of bacteria that we would, you know, these are normal bacteria like. Uh, the ones that make some of them make us sick. Um, you know, you always wash your hands to get rid of them. Uh, but also these, also these extremophiles that live in very harsh conditions. Uh, put a knee in there. They live in really harsh conditions, and like black smokers in the bottom of the ocean, and really salty conditions. They live in your mouth as. Uh, like cause tooth decay. So they can live without oxygen. That's what's really difficult about uh, your bacteria in your mouth and to get rid of them. So, but you start off with these three domains, eukaryota, which is all these black coated here, and then the bacteria, which are archaea, and we could even put them in color code. We could say they're blue. And then these are the extremophiles. So if you want to look at these in a little different way, we could say, this category here. We have eukaryotic are these, archaea are these extremophile live in extreme conditions, and then eubacteria are normal bacteria. Okay. You can also remember though that you can call these guys archaea and eubacteria 
Monera. And that's what they used to call them. So if we keep going here, we have six kingdoms then. These are the normal kingdoms we think of. Uh, plants, animals, protista fungi, then the two Monera, archaebacteria, and eubacteria. They just kind of get knocked down to the next group. And then, as I showed you, uh, you know, we go back there one more time here, the picture, then it just gets you, you have these, all the kingdoms, and we don't show a domain here, but up here would be the three domains, and uh, in eukaryota would be all these. These are all eukaryota. But then, you know, each one, so we have this uh, black bear, it's in a specific phylum, along with the grizzly bear, the panda bear, and these, and these are all, it gets less and less inclusive as you go down. So let's go back. So what is the reason for this? Why do, why do scientists even use this? Well, for one thing, it helps just gives us general organization and uh, allows us uh, to group things according to similarities. And that's called morphology. So uh, if you go back to that picture again, you know, a grizzly bear and a black bear and a panda bear, they have some similarities. They look kind of similar. And even all of these guys, even if we went over to a panda bear and a fox and a squirrel, you'd say they have some similarities. And even if you include the snake and the sea star, they even have some things that make them all similar, make them all animals, this kingdom animalia. And so the morphology is there. There are certain things that they have that make them fit into this group. So, uh, the person that came up with this is Carl Linné. We've learned a little bit about him. Uh, really fascinating guy, actually. And uh, just, he's one that first proposed this system and it's become more and more refined as it's gone. And then uh, one important part of the system is that it uses Latin. And Latin is really useful because it's a dead language. So, uh, if you want to use a word to describe an organism, that words, the meaning of that word is never going to change. But today we have, you know, all these different words that mean uh, things that didn't, they didn't mean 20 years ago, and, and in 20 more years they might mean something very different again. So that's not useful. If you're trying to name an organism, using words to describe it, uh, and that word changes its meaning, then you'd have to change the name of the organism because it doesn't fit anymore. So to, to overcome that, they use Latin. And then also with this system, the way to name things, each organ has a unique genus and species name. And again, if we go back to that picture, uh, the grizzly bear, Ursus arctos, is its unique genus and species name. Uh, and one important thing, really important to remember, we started off with three domains, but we have millions and millions of species. Because it's so specific, there's so many different groups or so many different organisms that is just a huge number. And then one thing uh, that's become more and more important as the as time has gone by is, is advances in uh, understanding of DNA and genetics has occurred. Uh, not No longer are organisms merely grouped by morphology, but not they're grouped for different reasons. And if we look, go back to this page here, there's some really good ones here. Okay, so physical structure, morphology, how they look. Evolu evolutionary relationships, so how are they related to each other uh, as they changed? And then embryo embryonic similarities, so some embryo embryos are similar uh, in their development. Now this is kind of a controversial one actually. Uh, I see this one over here, I will caution you of this one because uh, there's been a lot of studies that show maybe that's not really true. Okay, there's some, but not like they had, had once thought. And then genetic similarities for sure. So if we look at a, even a human and a chimp, they're very similar genetically. And then biochemical. So the things that are going on inside the body are also similar as well. So they use all those things today to categorize things. So they've actually gone back and changed some groups, some things are in, and now it makes sense. Maybe you think about it, is the, you know they used to have less kingdoms, and now they have more because they're just splitting things out uh, from what they originally were. So that's kind of your notes on classification. I hope it was a little better for you. When you actually got to see me. Okay.
of the notes, which is probably hopefully helpful. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, hope you're doing well in the class. And if you have any questions, let me know. And have a good day.